Okay. There you go. Oh. Customs Museum. Customs House Museum. There it is there. This house was established to collect customs duties for goods coming in and out of Queensland prior to the Federation of Australia in 1901. What Detail on the chimney. This is the the only inland whoops, customs house in Australia still in existence. So I think it's five dollars entry each. We'll go have a look, eh? Hey? This little house has got a war display inside, so it'll be interesting in there. Bring back these old prams, I reckon. Now, is that for a bassinet? All the old sewing machines. Get this, that's a cobbler's sewing machine. Make shoes. Oh, yeah, cobbler made shoes, didn't he? Do. Butter churn. Imagine trying to do that, not going down to Coles and getting a block of butter. That's an old optometrist chair. We're in Martha's kitchen. History and growth of the wool in the Wool industry in Gundawindi. Yeah, I think that is merino wool. Soft. Soft. Yeah. Coolies yoke or yokey. Yeah, those of you who don't know what a cotton plan looks like. Interesting stuff in here, John. Yeah, very interesting. I like it. Look at that old cheese. Imagine, imagine how sore people's hands were. Doing that all day. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go out in the backyard. This is a horse-drawn mould board plough. This is a hay rake used for raking pastures. This one here is a horse-drawn grader. This grader was used by the Wagga Gamba Shire Council during the 1920s. Take a walk down here to the blacksmith's workshop. Straight when I walk in, there's a poison cart. This cart was used for distributing poison baits. I think it'd be easy to just carry them in, your, in a bag or something and just like chucking them out here and there then You'd think so. this thing around. Heavy. We used to with the horse in the front. Yeah. Interesting contraption. Alright, this is called the Crusher, John. What's it want to crush? For making bricks. Yeah. Okay. This is a horse-drawn bag loader. 
The loader was harnessed to a horse which was stored by the farmer. A bag of wheat was manually loaded onto the loader and as the horse moved forward the loader was raised up and the bag was tossed onto the wagon. The horse then moved backwards to lower the loader ready for the next bag. And that huge thing there is called a percussion rig. And this one here is the Bentel Chaff Cutter. This is the trunk of an elephant tree. It kind of does look like an elephant when you really look at it. But look at the size of it. Ruston and Hornsby. What was it though? Some sort of engine. Is it? Okay. Up there is the Daryl flo flood boat. This flood boat was originally owned by the Australian Pastoral Company for the use on the property of Daryl, which was situated on the Mooney River between Mungingi and Dirabandi, and it was used during the 1890 flood. And then this thing here is a lathe. During World War II, from 9th of April 1942 until the 12th of February 1943, the American Army took military occupant of Chandler's Garage, which was situated on the corner of Calendoon, Russell and Herbert Streets. During that time, the Army installed this lathe in their workshop. This horse-drawn cart belonged to Kinley's Bakery, which operated during the 1950s and 1960s. Um, the baker's cart carried 250 loaves of superbread, which was sold for three and a half pence, or seven cents per loaf, and was delivered to customers around town. This is a wagonette. It was driven by Mrs. Melba McEwen, who was well known for her skill and, abil and abilities as a member of her, of her father's droving team. What was the suspension on it? Like leaf springs? Yeah, Are they leaf, leaf springs? Leaf springs yeah. Look at that technology today. Look at those now car. I thought it was a bridge to have one of those, I suppose. I wonder. It? All her luggage on the back. That's that cool, John. That technology is still in our car. This is a tip dray. It was constructed of hardwood and used for shifting gravel. There's a farm wagon. Oh. Look at this. Look at this, John. It's an operating table. Wow. Oh, my God. Metal, hard, operating table used in the 10-bed border hospital. The first hospital built in Gundawindi around 1890 was named the Border Hospital and was situated in Bowen Street on the site at the present hospital. All right, this one, Not Gladstone. And bread. What was that? On here it says duties of St. Thomas's nurse, 1844. What does it say, John? It was patients, collect beer and bread. <laughs> That's funny. And this one here is a collapsible ambulance stretcher. This is a good one. It's the Queensland Ambulance Transport Board and it's a railway ambulance. Powered by Model T Ford motor. How cool is that? It ran very hot and the manifold glowed cherry red at night. With an, with an open exhaust it was also very noisy. It was also notorious for its discomfort as the patient lay alongside the motor. See that? That's called Marshall's Street Light, an original light installed in Marshall Street in 1937. The formwork for the light poles and bollards was made by local carpenter J.L. Lambert, who ran his joinery business from the back of the Gundy Cafe in Marshall Street. And John's just over now at the entry to the wall display. 
incorporated into the into the like a frame. German 77 millimeter field gun. This is scary to look at. World War II gas mask. And then next to it, a Japanese mountain gun shell. I'd love to film what's in all these glass cabinets here, but it's very hard with the glare. I love this. His country called. He answered. We've seen those on a lot of... Um, War graves. Army uniform used in Afghanistan. It's the desert uniform used in Afghanistan. And this fellow's got the jungle greens of Vietnam. Great history here in the Little War Museum, but um, yeah, everything is in display cabinets, so a little bit hard to film for you, but well worth a visit. As you know, John and I also love looking in war museums. Um, they're just so interesting. Okay, $5 entry to Customs House Museum. There was interesting stuff in there. There was, it's um, very interesting. I think we've seen a lot more stuffy than we'd seen in a lot of the other ones. Yeah, different things. Yeah. But you know what else? Five dollars is a good fee for a little museum with artifacts in it. I think it, it is. Because, you yeah, know... Once that, you've seen one, you've seen them all. But yeah. as I said, there was a few different ones here we hadn't seen. And it's and it's just affordable, five bucks each. So yeah. well worth coming. Yeah.